This is All India Radio. Power of listening. Under this series, tonight we take you on a journey to the world of yet another magnificent facet of the traditional Indian knowledge systems. I am Manoj Mainkar. In today's episode, we shall be focusing on the Bakshali manuscript, an ancient Indian mathematical text written on the birch bark, regarded as the oldest extant manuscript in Indian mathematics. The expert on the show is Dr. Parthasarthi Mukhopadhyay, writer and associate professor of mathematics, Ramakrishna Mission Residential College, Narendrapur, West Bengal. Talking to him is Dr. Manas Pratim Das. Stay tuned. Welcome listeners to this episode of a series that gives you a glimpse of the ancient Indian knowledge system tells you about the people who developed this system and gives you a fair idea of where we stood at different points of time in relation to other knowledge systems in the world. Today, we have with us an eminent scholar of mathematics as well as the history of it, Dr. Partho Sharati Mukhopadhyay. He is here to discuss with us the importance and the gift of the Bakshali manuscript. Welcome Professor Mukhopadhyay here in this studio where we look forward to getting quite a firm grip on what Bakshali manuscript means to the Indian system of knowledge. We would like to start with this question, why is this manuscript, the Bakshali manuscript, considered so important? Thank you for your kind introduction. You see, Bakshali manuscript happens to be the oldest written document about Indian mathematics that we know as of now. And this document contains amazing level of mathematics, particularly arithmetic. And if I want to point out or single out some specific instances, one is the written bold dot zero that is available in fact, Bakshali manuscript is replete with that, numbers expressed in decimal system with written bold dot zero and some amazing formulae and their applications, problems solved by the formulae. In fact, at a later period of our discussion, if time permits, I'd like to throw some light on some of them like uh, formula for summation of arithmetic progression, formula for finding approximate square root, which as a matter of fact turns out to be the same as was found by Newton using calculus about a thousand years later. So, there is no doubt that Bakshali manuscript is uh, undoubtedly one of the most important mathematical document, not only for us Indians, but for the whole humankind as such. Right. Dr. Mukhopadhyay, we already feel excited. The mercury is rising. And the next uh, question naturally would be, when and where it was found, the script? Well, this uh, was found in around May 1881. It was found at a place which is uh, about 80 kilometers from Peshawar in the Yusufjai region or the Mardan province, and this particular place was referred to as Bakshalai or Bakshali, and that's how it uh, got the name Bakshali manuscript. Actually, one uh, very poor farmer was not a owner of the land, he was actually trying to do some sort of cultivation work and trying to level the ground for sowing his seeds, and that's how from beneath a huge stone, he found this, you know, about 70 mutilated pages of barch bark with some inscriptions on them and he actually was not, you know, educated enough to understand but thanks to him that he somehow understood the significance of it, possible significance and he handed it over to the landlord. His name was Anwanuddin and who happened to be the in charge of the local police station. 
So that's how he understood its significance and submitted it to the local commissioner, who was an Englishman. And then after several such, uh, you know, important incidents, it uh, was handed over to General Alexander Cunningham, who was uh, then the at the top of the Archaeological Survey of India and was the Lieutenant Governor of the Punjab province at that point of time. And General Cunningham decided to send it to Dr. Hornell at Calcutta. You know, at that point of time, Calcutta was the capital, capital city of British India. And Dr. Hornell, who was uh, the head of Calcutta Madrasa at that point of time, and Calcutta Madrasa was one of the oldest educational institute established by the British in uh, the South Asia. And Dr. Hornell was uh, an expert of this uh, kind of documents, these oriental studies. And he actually deciphered the texts. And uh, initially, in Asiatic Society of Bengal in 1882, he first gave a lecture and presented the core of the knowledge here. Later, he wrote detailed articles in 1883 in the Indian Antiquary. By that time, one Indian newspaper, Bombay Gazette, they had an article published on it and that's how it uh, became famous internationally. In Berlin, there was an international seminar where Professor Weber of Germany, he declared the event of finding this invaluable document. And that's how the international community started taking interest into it. And it was actually Dr. Hornell who was the first person to technically decipher the texts and meaning of it. Right. Uh, so, till this point of time, whatever we have gathered from Dr. Mukhopadhyay, I will try to summarize. The manuscript named Bakshali manuscript was actually discovered in a village called Bakshalai. The farmer who found it passed it on to his landlord and from there, through different pathways, it went into the hands of uh, the pundits who mattered, who knew how to make a meaning of it. And one of them was uh, Professor Hornell, who analyzed and uh, explained what it contains. And the next question that we have in mind is that origin of any historical manuscript or for that matter any object. These are uh, always shrouded in debates. However, we have to arrive at some uh, possible date uh, when it was written. So, what do pundits have to say about the time of the writing of Bakshali manuscript? Well, that's a very important question in fact regarding Bakshali manuscript uh, because uh, this is uh, one of the topic which is really very hotly debated right now as well. You know, initially when uh, Dr. Hornell worked on it, he estimated the timeline to be somewhere in 3rd uh, or 4th century of our common era. And he did this analysis in terms of the language, the grammar, the other parameters available in the problems. Later, another stalwart, uh, Bibhuti Bhushan Datta, is the, of Datta Singh fame of that famous book, History of Hindu Mathematics, right. Uh, Vibhuti Bhushan Dutta worked on it in uh, around 1929 and he placed it vaguely by the language that it must be sometime in the early centuries of our modern Christian era. But then one uh, British gentleman, Dr. Kai, the one who actually after Dr. Hornell who worked at length with Bakshali manuscript and translated the whole uh, content and written three volumes on it. But he put it somewhere in between 10th and 12th century of the common era. So you see the so difference, a huge, it's a huge difference. difference. But may I point out that nowadays among the persons at the know of this particular field, it is almost certainly established that uh, Dr. Kaye had a very strong Eurocentric bias. Later on, one uh, contemporary scholar, Japanese scholar, uh, Hayashi, he has done his PhD on this uh, Bakshali manuscript and where he has gone at length to describe and discuss from various parameters the timeline he fixed uh, at around uh, 5th to 7th century. There is a time of uh, the first Vashkara who was the commentator of Aryavata. And uh, the most important thing that I would like to point out regarding this discussion, 
Dr. Hornell in 1902, actually, after he has uh, gone through the entire manuscript and understood the way he could, he actually sent it back to England. And from that point of time, it is there in the Bodleian Library of Oxford. So Bodleian Library had uh, made a team of uh, their you know, heritage science group under the uh, chairmanship of David Howell. And they have undergone through uh, carbon dating. It's a, it's a, a C14 test. Uh, that means uh, the radiocarbon dating of the manuscript has been done. And according to that dating, three particular folios, a part of that, was subjected to the analysis. And the folio 16 turned out to be somewhere between 224 and 383 common era. Folio 17 in 680 to 779 and folio 33 in 885 to 993 common era. Now what happened immediately after this was disclosed by Professor Marcus Sutoy of uh, Oxford in the social media, before they actually published their observation in a form of research paper for peer review, a group of uh, eminent historians who have been working on uh, this history of ancient mathematics, particularly Indian mathematics, including Professor Hayashi, uh, Professor Plofker, Clemency Montel, they have together written a kind of rejoinder in a paper telling that this is historically absurd because their pre-declared theory of timeline is not matching with this radiocarbon dating. Various different kind of objections were raised. One was, how can three pages of one single document be of, you know, three different time periods with such a huge gap between them. But there are other scholars who are looking at it and trying to understand the what can be the other possible option to accommodate this data. And one very important observation from this side is the fact that this document, according to even Hayashi's observation, it's not written by one single person. The handwriting shows that at least two to five people were involved. And if you look at the colophon, that was available, fortunately, in the page 50, that shows that this is written by one uh, person who declares himself as the son of Chajaka, and he is writing this document for son of one Vashishta, whose name is Hashika, and his descendants. Yes, of course, uh, at that point of time, it was customary to give one's family history, right? The history of the author. Right. So that's how, from the colophon, you see two things. Firstly, it appears that this should be a uh, important family treasure. The language hints towards that. And the other part is the fact that this document is not the original Bakshali document because the language in Sanskrit that this uh, person, he uses the language in Sanskrit which is Likhitam. The Sanskrit scholars say that if it was his original work, the language would have been Birochitam or yes. Kritam. Likhitam refers to the fact that he is only a scribe. He is copying it down from an earlier version. And you know, it's a Bach Bark manuscript. And these are absolutely mutilated now. And these things are supposed to get destroyed with time. So it was quite possible that at certain different phases, some particular pages, somehow they were damaged beyond repair. Mm -hmm. And it was replaced by, you know, scribes. And mm -hmm. that's how the different handwriting is accommodated. And that explains the difference in time. Difference in time as well. Mm. So one very important uh, point is uh, that is being raised and uh, requests are being sent from all, uh, you know, relevant quarters to these Bodleian people that why don't they go for the C14 dating of all these 70 pages that are available? Why just only three? So this is a logical question. Why aren't they putting the whole set under the scanner? And it's very interesting to note that it was written in, uh, it's called Gatha. And the script is Sharda. And this was uh, once prevalent in the Kashmir region. A very interesting point is this region is quite close to the ancient uh, seat of learning, Gandhara region, that Takshila. Okay. If you remember, Takshila was from 1000 BC to 4th century common era. It was one of the 
great centers great of centers of learning all yeah. over the world in fact people from all over the world used to come there mm. and uh, as always unfortunately happened in case of india this was also plundered again and again by the huns and from 4th century it was completely destroyed right and this is the time it suggests and you know what happened when this uh, learning sites were destroyed manuscripts and things from them somehow some uh, people always tried to you know with one two or five whatever they could the manage to preserve to preserve and uh, you know to go to some other safe places with them who knows maybe bakshali manuscript the original one see that Surviving 70 pages manner. yes the 70 pages that we have that neither have the first page nor have the last page of the document we don't know what is the name of the actual work we don't know who is the writer he has called himself chajaka putra his father's name is chajaka even his own name is not known to us and uh, the exact content of the book uh, listeners needless to say that we are in the midst of a very exciting discussion about the bakshali manuscript it feels like we are on a mission and our guide is dr partho sharadi mukhopadhyay and uh, having uh, discussed not in great details but at least we have an idea about it how it was discovered where it is kept how we came to know about it, its origin timeline etc we now feel like asking what does the bakshari manuscript actually reveal about the development of our mathematical knowledge in the pre aryabhatta phase or era well actually it does uh, reveal a lot but in the short time span let me concentrate on one or two most startling points like the approximate square root formula that is found in bakshali and there are six sums solved by this formula the formula says akrite slishto krityunang shesho chheda disanguna tad barga dala sanslishta iti shuddhi kritikhaya now this if you decipher from sanskrit to the normal mathematical terminology it means that if you have a number which is not a perfect square itself how to get successive approximation to better and better result of this square root and this leads to a arithmetic formula which turns out to be exactly same if you apply newton raphson method which uses calculus and which was done more than a thousand years later by newton so this tells you about the level you know this medium perhaps is not the best way to technically detail on this kind of mathematical expression so i'm not getting into that but it actually reveals and 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 uh, you know make us feel the sense of wonder and awe to the level of mathematical understanding of these mathematicians at that initial level another very important aspect that we find in bakshali manuscript is that it is replete with the bold dot written zero symbol you see it's a very important fact that uh, zero was invented in india but from what point of time this was in vogue this is still shrouded in mystery right one important fact that you must understand that initially the indian knowledge system was based on shruti that was completely in oral tradition mm-hmm. and in oral tradition when you talk about numbers see i in our english language even today i talk about 100 it's a name i don't actually require zero to explicitly use to call 100 or 1000 i need it when i write so until india started writing though this decimal system of nomenclature is as old as the rigveda itself there is no direct reference to the number 0 in the vedas because I, oral I tradition it, don't require related to, to listen to this the differential idea about writing and passing it through just hearing and yes. speaking and that's how i mean zero came exactly so this is excellent yeah. exactly you see when you start writing i i just give you one simple example when you talk about the number 101 it's a number name right it reveals the number but when you want to write 101 and that too in a place value system if you write 101 in a roman system you don't need zero for that right that's not a place value system but when you want to write it in decimal place value system then you know that one is in the units place one is in the hundreds place but what to put in between 
in the 10th place hmm. one to nine nobody works there and there you require a symbol to represent the absence of any of these digits from one to nine and that was compulsorily felt only when you started writing when india started writing this requirement of the symbol for this zero the number it actually began to be felt and as far as we know till date prior to ashokan edicts there is no standard written document of indian history and ashokan edicts mostly were written on brahmi and a few on karshti now brahmi script as a very uh, important and very interesting uh, point to ponder upon that the brahmi script when you write number they are actually additive in principle there is no zero in the brahmi numeral so that was a very puzzling question that a civilization which is comfortable with decimal nomenclature of numbers in sanskrit right from the ages of rigveda when it started writing why did it adopt the lesser the more primitive version of additive system not the place value itself so it was discussed at length by several uh, you know experts one recent article was uh, to be found in uh, the fantastic magazine mathematical magazine called bhavana which is published from bengaluru and there is uh, professor divakaran of tifr he has given a beautiful uh, possible answer to this question and there is the importance of bakshali manuscript this is the oldest known document where the numbers are written in decimal system the way we write it today where you would write 101 by writing 101 side by side and there are so many so many examples of numbers written in that way and this zero there in the bakshali manuscript is nowadays referred to as bold dot zero now that is the ancient most written version of indian zero it's called bindu shunya and as a contemporary period i can talk about one particular uh, book it's by shuvandhu it's called bashavadatta it's a romantic tale and here you see there's an analogy where this zero is referred to as a bindu shunno binda vaiva vilikhitam that is the exact phrase that is being used it was like you know uh, it's it's a romantic tale of a king and a queen and the king is uh, not present he has gone to uh, some war or something and the queen in the night sky night time looking at the sky thinking about beloved king and this is kind of metaphor this shubandhu is uh, creating there and where he is talking about using this language in this context that the queen thought looking at the sky that as if the god himself with the bit of a chalk like the moon has drawn the stars as zero dots shunna vinda viva vilikitam what a level of imagination and you see there this is not a mathematics text this is a text of a romantic tale for common people common mass so it tells you that at that point of time around 4th century the common mass of india were ready to understand shunya as a bindu a dot mark and the bakshali manuscript shows that dot zero that bindu shunya everywhere in bakshali manuscript so as we gather from this answer of yours bakshali manuscript actually put the zero in such a manner in script that it became more communicable right is it to pass on to other scholars and at the same time it actually fixed the position of when india started using the zero right so of course this is a revelation to us people lay persons like us who want to understand the development of mathematics in india in the ancient era but but if i may if i may yeah. i just like like to add one line here one technical point regarding the nature of this bakshali zero zero has two different roles to play in this place value system one role is the kind of what is called the place holder like that make a distinction between 101 and 1001 right that allows the other digits to go to their own places now bakshali zero is definitely place holder zero the other and more improved version of zero is zero as a number in its own right the zero that we get when we write 2 minus 2 is equal to zero Which this zero nothing. is at the same level with every other number now whether the bakshali zero whether the bakshali mathematics using zero in that level as well is still a question of controversy among the experts some of the experts believe that the deep calculation that bakshali manuscript reveals 
It is not possible unless you understand the mathematical property of zero in its arithmetical operation. Like what happens when you add zero with something? What happens when you multiply zero with something else? Because so many arithmetical operations with this kind of numbers in Bakshali. It's a huge numbers, you know, fractions. As a very interesting point is that fraction in Bakshali manuscript was written by the numerator and denominator written one below the other, but there is no line in between, right? The way we write today, yeah, something divided by this, so that dividing horizontal line was not there. It was Just one under, under the other. Yes, one under the other. And there you would see hundreds of examples where these zeros are there exactly as it would have been in a normal decimal system. But whether this zero can be given the level of the zero that Brahmagupta gave it in 7th century. Dhanar dhanam rinam rinayor dhanar rinayor antaram and shamaikke khom where he is categorically stating that sum of two positive number is positive, sum of two negative number is negative. When you take a positive and a negative number and make a sum, it's actually their difference. And when you make such a difference with two numbers of same value, x with minus x are added, it is equal to zero. Shamaikke khom. That is where it is categorically stated as far as we know as of now that this principle that the zero is given the fullest right as a number in its own right. Now that level of understanding of the role of zero, whether it was present in the Bakshali manuscript or not, it's still a question of debate and is being pursued by various experts in various corners of the world. Listeners, as you can well understand, the inertia of the discussion actually forbids us to conclude this uh, discussion but we have to look at the watch we have to conclude it somewhere and as we can all feel here sitting in the studio that it needs to be continued Dr. Mukhopadhyay's last answer was replete with these words controversy debate whether these words were there to mean to indicate that a lot of research can be done and needs to be done with the Bakshali manuscript. But at least in this short span of time, we have got an idea, might not be very deep or wide spanning idea, but an idea which is rich and with which we can progress and might be there are students who are listening to this program who might on some later day take up research on the Bakshali manuscript and that would be the absolute success that this program can desire for. Dr. Mukhopadhyay, thanks a lot for coming to our studios, shedding light on such a, such a mathematical uh, treasure and telling us how to look at it. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Bakshali Manuscript, the ancient Indian mathematical text. You heard the 30th episode of our all-new series on traditional Indian knowledge systems, Power of Listening. The expert on the show was Dr. Parthasarthi Mukhopadhyay, writer and associate professor of mathematics, Ramakrishna Mission Residential College, Narendrapur, West Bengal. Talking to him was Dr. Manas Pratim Das. We hope you enjoyed it. This series has been conceptualized by Shashi Shekhar Vimpati, CEO Prasar Bharati and produced by Vinod Kumar and Dr. Manas Pratim Das. Special thanks to AIR Kolkata, Amol Parth and Randhir Thakur for their contributions. This episode is also available on our official YouTube channel, Akashwani AIR. Be there on the 29th of April, same time, same frequencies. This is Manoj Mainkar signing off from Delhi. Bye for now.